Okay, Annette, why do we need to talk about seasickness today? Because someone got seasick. Uh, who could that be? But only a little bit. Welcome to Sailboating with Sophie and Annette, a mini series about offshore sailing brought to you by Catamaran Supply and inspired by Rum Swizzle. <laughs> Our friends Annette and Willem started Catamaran Supply when they were preparing for their first offshore crossing and after they became frustrated with the marine supply options out there. Having a hard time finding the right information and fair prices, they knew there had to be a better way and Catamaran Supply was born in January 2019. Catamaran Supply is a modern marine supply store to shop, learn and come together as sailors. The goal is to create a marine supply business that promotes sharing DIY knowledge, sustainability, inclusivity and brands that create high quality products. Products. Catamaran Supply, modern marine supplies for sailors by sailors. All right, how long have you known that you are prone to seasickness? I've known since we got into some bad weather on our own boat, um, but it did not happen often before our trip. I, for my part, have been solidly seasick for the first year of our sailing adventure and so to all of you out there who are probably watching this video thinking that seasickness is the worst thing ever, we have some good tips to share with you on how to manage it. Yes, because if it's managed, it can be prevented. Okay, so tip number one is to prepare yourself for a seasickness, or should I say against seasickness, the day before departure. And what we mean by that is that you should really eat a lot, drink a lot of water, try to relax as much as possible, get yourself a good night of sleep, and most importantly, this is when you get on your medication. Seasickness medication works as a way to prevent seasickness and not to cure it. So yes, at this point you should know about what time you're departing. So plan ahead, make sure to put that medication in your belly or the patch, wherever it needs to go, but apply it because it needs time to help you. I will say that after three years of sailing full time, mm -hmm. 13,000 nautical miles, and a solid year of being seasick literally every time we would get offshore my absolute favorite and only seasickness medication is a prescription drug called copoderm it's like scopolamine that you can only get if you talk to your doctor and i put it behind my ear every time before we go on the passage and it works wonders i think this was my first time actually taking any kind of seasickness medication and i can confirm it worked well Find the seasickness medication that works for you, talk to your doctor, but make sure to take that medication many hours before the passage. Tip number two is for the day of departure. Stay very well fed, stay very well hydrated. So you really wanna make sure that you monitor your calorie intake and eat as much as possible. A passage is not the time to be on a diet. You use so much energy and so much calories just being on the boat because it moves so much. You need to eat much more than you normally do. You also need to hydrate yourself a lot more because you're in a very salty environment and you lose a lot of water. You sweat much more than you realize. And if your blood sugar gets low or you are dehydrated, this is when seasickness can kick in. This brings us to tip number three, which is dress appropriately. It is imperative that you have the right amount of clothes on. Yes, so right after this video, we are making another video about <laughs> how to dress for offshore sailing yes, in yes, yes. all type of uh, weather conditions. Mm. But definitely one thing that will trigger seasickness on top of being dehydrated or low on blood sugar uh, is to be cold. Sailing offshore when it's cold is a lot worse than being on land when it's cold because everything is humid. You want to make sure that you are dressed appropriately and that you stay warm at all time or if you're sailing in a really warm climate that you have a way to cool yourself down. Yes, that's equally important. Actually, the little fan that you have that you can move around the boat has been so helpful for me because between Bonaire and Bermuda, it was incredibly hot. So much so that it gave me a headache. And of course, yes, that was part, part of the seasickness. But having that airflow was so helpful. Yeah. Okay, so tip number four is super important, something that you need to think about before you leave yes. and something that you need to constantly work on. It's important and it is knowing what are the foods and drinks that you can have when you feel seasick. So how do you figure it out? 
I think it's trial and error. You will figure out very quickly when you're nauseous what are the only things that can go through your body. So my seasickness food, for example, it's very individual. Mine is very lemony hummus that I have with carrots. I also like my tomato soup that I make and I pack it with calories by putting a lot of cream in there and a lot of butter. Anything that's a smoothie, a juice, a soda. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. The liquid is equally important for me. If it's oatmeal, it has to be more water or milk, however you make it in there. For me specifically, the tomato soup, incredibly helpful. Dipping bread in it helps you put a few extra calories in there. I find, however, that dry crackers and things that some people have suggested me to me before are absolutely unhelpful to me. They just will not go down. So definitely test it out. It, is probably going to be different for everybody. Yeah. But once you know what that is, have it ready, have it nearby. Yeah. Because when you need it, you need it. One universal tip if you do not know what your seasickness food could be is to have something liquid on hand. So that can be a soup, that can be a smoothie. Yeah. Liquids are a lot easier to ingest when you are nauseous than anything solid and dry. Tip number five is equally important and requires constant listening to your body and to yourself. And that is try to recognize and know your early signs of seasickness. There is a misconception that seasickness starts with nausea. So when you start feeling queasy or you, you, you want to uh, that's when it starts. But no, 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 no. It starts way earlier than that. And there are signs that you can learn and recognize and you can do something about it right when you start feeling them. So what, are, what is the sign for you, Sophie? Do you know? So I get really drowsy. I get super tired. I feel an urge to go sleep and take a nap. And then I get a tad uh, irritable. Mm. When I start feeling that the world annoys me, that's when I know that, oh. <laughs> for me, I think uh, there's a headache involved. If I'm a little bit too cold and you know, I've, I've been to a shivering place of cold before. If my stomach gets nervous, I like to use the word nervous, not sure why, but to me that means that I am starting to feel that if I were to eat something, maybe my appetite wouldn't be there. And it's a big, big one for me. Yeah. So there are red flags that happen way before queasiness and that's headaches, drowsiness, irritability, it's not just no care. All right, so at this point, you can feel that something's going on, you're not feeling your best, you're not completely nauseous yet, but you know that you should do something about it. So as soon as you start feeling a sign of seasickness, whether it is that you're irritable or you're downright nauseous, you need to force yourself to eat and drink whether or not that feels right. And at this point, yeah. you should still be able to. So take more than what your body is asking for Yeah, because it needs energy. And we know because we've been there that it sounds completely counterintuitive, right? At mm -hmm. this point, your body is like eating, hell no. Mm. But that is 100% what you need to do at this point if you wanna have a fighting chance to not go down the path of hell. I would say at this point it's savable. What do you think? At this point it's savable. If you're not too nauseous, you're, you can definitely save it. Say that this doesn't work out for whatever reason, because you know, maybe between Bonner and Bermuda, you're bashing into waves for days on end and you just can't do anything and you're starting to feel really, really bad. Are we at there? At this point. Are we there? <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Yes. Oh no no no! It's it's we're still oh, get, we're still okay we're still okay. I mean at this point I was not okay. Tip number seven is that you need to do what's best for you in this moment, and that can look very different for a whole bunch of people. So for example, I heard a lot that I should go in the cockpit and hand steer and look at the horizon, right? That doesn't work for me because I get very sensitive to light. And so what I need to do is to go down in the cabin and close my eyes and be in as dark a place as I can possibly be and, and rest and lay down. And this is how I can have a chance to fight it. And then, <laughs> oh no. Do you remember those little uh, fruit puree pouches that oh we had. Oh my gosh, I they would, were amazing. I would grab I would grab five of them that would be like I would be laying in bed with I, my eyes closed like sipping on them like yeah. So tip number eight is for when 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 things go bad, right? Oh. Like you are there, you yes. are nauseous, there is nothing you can do at this point. You you've eaten, you've been drinking water and you are just laying 
green. You feel the need, but it's not there, and like your body doesn't like you still fight your body. You're like, uh, no, yeah. no, no, yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. I'm not gonna do it. Oh, I was I'm stronger. <laughs> I'm stronger than this. I could just keep playing here, and if I don't move, it's not gonna get worse. All right, we're talking about throwing up. <gasps> It took me that long to figure out that when I get nauseous, mm -hmm. the best way to get over it is to just let it out. Yes, uh, even if it's multiple it's, rounds, just do it. It's nasty. Uh, it's It sounds gross, yeah, it's but awful. I promise you that once you have it out in the ocean, uh, as we call it, okay. fed the fishes. <laughs> Keeping it classy on polar seal. Always. <laughs> you have this 10 minutes window during which you feel good. Your stomach is stable. Yeah. You're, you feel that you have your head back. You feel that you have yeah. your mind back. And this is the time that you want to have that seasickness food that we talked about ready, ready for action. And you just want to like start, like stuff yourself with as much of it as you possibly can. You will feel that. You will feel that you are able to put something in your body. And as soon as you do, use that opportunity because it's not going to last very long but if you eat it's going to feel okay for that little short amount of time yeah because unfortunately it can go on like long like that yeah it's tough it's tough but we're, we're with you yes there's you get, there's you, a way out you get this Woo! yeah and, I, and actually that is my tip number nine mm -hmm. give yourself a reset and do not do not give up. Yeah. So once you're there, we know that it's hard. We have been there. I have been crawling from the bed to under the chair table, digging in the ditch bag to find a gel that I sipped on, laying on the floor. True story. Only to go throw up 10 minutes later. It's hard. It's really hard. Don't give up. Be the fighter. But honestly, I think we were we were there for each other and I think we all fought when we were in this position and I think that's what got us through it. Yes, it did not feel like it was fast. That's Our seasickness well. conditions improved because we were working very hard at it. The weather was not going to let up, so it was just all up to us. And that is actually our tip number 10. Tip number 10 is for the people around somebody who is getting seasick. If you see that your crew is getting seasick, do not mention it unless they do. What you can do is to go downstairs, find their seasickness food, and just put it there. You know, like just yeah. be nice, make sure that they're comfortable, offer Put to take offer offer to take over the watch because we're all in the same boat at this point, literally. Very literally. And it is in everybody's interest to keep the seasickness out of the boat. I had a bonus tip, and that's for for people like for like people like you, Sophie. That because I'm saying this because I actually wasn't aware of how prone to it I was. And prior to our trip, when we had this tough weather condition, I wasn't. I never got really seasick. I never took seasickness medication. It happened to me twice that it was really really bad. But other than that, I got through sailing X amount of years without ever getting too bad of a seasickness. Whereas on the other hand, you you say you said that it happens to you a lot, right? Yeah. So I would say, if you want to go out boating, you want to go out sailing, but you do get seasick, just don't give up. There's ways to prevent it. There's mm -hmm. ways to go about it and live with it. Here's living proof. <laughs> All right, well, we hope that you found this video helpful. If you have tips for anybody with uh, seasickness or things that have worked well for you or for people you know, leave them in the comment section. If you have further questions, don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section as well. And Annette and I will see you for a new episode of Sailboating with Sophie and Annette. Real soon. <laughs>